Uh, here's another quick uh, uh, little instructional video for Messenger Library. Uh, and I want to actually go through uh, something that you can find under the uh, examples that install with Messenger Library. Uh, to find the examples, you go to the example finder, search for uh, mess. It's actually under messaging, is an older name. And these are some uh, examples that are installed. They're not most well thought out examples, they're just sort of things that. Uh, over the development of the library that I've kind of made as I went along and then turned into examples. Uh, things we're going to look at today is uh, uh, asynchronous dialogues. Uh, often in a, a project, you are, an, a user will trigger an action and you'll need to ask the user, uh, you know, are you sure, or some kind of dialogue, or what, what, uh, what file should I save this under? And normally with the dialog boxes provided in LabVIEW, they are blocking. They, uh, they'll stop whatever your code is doing while the user uh, handles the dialog, uh, possibly for many seconds or minutes. And if you have a loop that's handling multiple things, that's a problem because you'll be blocked. You'll not be doing what you're, whatever else you're supposed to be doing. Uh, so in this package, this includes something called the, uh, let's have a look at it, uh, Asynchronous dialogues. Uh, let's just run it. This little example. Uh, this little example is actually just a single loop, and it's just counting. So it's just showing that it's doing something. And then uh, when the user clicks something, you get a dialog to ask it, "Do you want to clear the count? Yes or no?" But you note that the count is still going on while this dialog is being shown. That's because this is going along in parallel. Ooh, there's a timeout as well. So let's say yes, please. Clear count cleared. That's again another. This is an informational dialog uh, that again is being showed in parallel. Uh, so let's quickly have a look. Again, see this is a single loop, so it's not complicated. Uh, it's a single loop with a timeout. The timeout is just doing a count. And when your user presses clear count, it launches a dialog. Uh, the dialog is, this is a three button dialog. It's based on the three button uh, con uh, dialog provided with LabVIEW, except that it's asynchronous. So it's got some of the same controls, setting up the buttons and what to say. But instead of providing any output, other than an error output, uh, what you do is you provide it your address. So here I've set up a, a user event messenger uh, registered for that user event, and then it sets up, it sends the message to say what the user uh, responded uh, uh, back to this, uh, this messenger. So that comes in, you have to have a message in the message received case, I get the message, and then whatever it is, so if it's the clear count dialog, then I can read it, and in this case, for the three button dialog, it passes back the name of the button that was pushed. Uh, so if you said yes, please, then again, I have another asynchronous dialog, which just says cleared. And if I say otherwise, I just don't do anything. And that's where I actually clear. Uh, another example of a dialog is if I have a select file, because often when the user selects, when the user says save, say you want to be able to ask them what the file name is. And again, I have an asynchronous dialog, which, uses, which just calls the, uh, the lab views inbuilt uh, file dialog. Uh, a lot of the same information is passed in. And again, you pass it out with a reply address. And again, we're using this relabel functionality where I don't even know what this sends back the reply as, but we relabel it as file selected. And that's the event. Uh, let's see, where's file selected? File selected. Uh, because this is a special, because a file dialog is special, you can select one or many files. Uh, this is a more complicated read function, which reads them. If you look on the palettes, data communication, messenger, asynchronous dialog, we have the three dialog buttons and then also the read results from the file. So let's run that. So again, when we want to select file, oops, uh, again, it asks for the file. And while it's asking, it's still running. And then when we select something, let's select a uh, messaging package. Okay, there you go. It comes through. Uh, yeah, again, clear count. No thanks. Clear count. Yes, please. User cleared. So you see, this is a, again, this is a, the whole. Uh, you can actually, if you want to be an advanced user, figure out how to make your own kind of asynchronous dialogues. It's a little more complicated because they all involve a class internally. Uh, uh, the asynchronous dialogues are actually a part of a whole set of things called. And again, this is for the advanced users, asynchronous actions. If you look under send, for example, there's send a delayed message. Let's give the help function here. Oops. 
So send delay message sends a message after a delay, obviously, but that has to do does it asynchronously. So this this function returns immediately. If you say send me a message in 60 seconds, this function will return immediately, and in 60 seconds it'll send the message back to you. Uh, that one is sort of a uh, another form of delayed send. And there's quite a, there's four or five other things. What else is there? Oh, there's an address watchdog. Uh, address watchdog is something where you give it an address to monitor. That's any other thing. It waits and monitors it, sees when it becomes invalid. So maybe you've launched an actor and you want to be told if the actor dies for some reason. Uh, a watchdog will wait for that and then send you a message when the other thing it's monitoring dies. And that's another example of an asynchronous process. Uh, anyway, that's uh, just a short uh, video. Thank you very much. Bye.